In this repair video, we're going to be working on yet another Asus laptop. This one is model number G531G. It came in for no power. We already disassembled the laptop, as you can see. And we removed the motherboard. Let's put this on the side and take a look at the motherboard and see what's going on. This is the board. GPU, CPU, memory. And maybe we should remove the memory when working on the board. And this is the back. As usual, the first thing we're going to do is inspect the power MOSFETs. But we have to locate them first. How does this? OK. So the charging cable plugs in from the back here. And MOSFETs should be in the front here or somewhere on the back. Let's take a look under the microscope and see if we are able to locate them. I do not see any MOSFETs in the front here, so they must be on the back. We do have one here that we can measure, but let me flip the board. And right here. We do see the MOSFETs right here. Meter in diet mode. And let's hope that we're going to find a short. I love it when we find a short. I love it. We're going to measure here. And we have a short. <laughs> wow, that was quick. We have a short here. All right, so we do have a short here. This one will be a quick repair. What we're going to do is we're going to inject voltage right at this point. And we're going to monitor the board under a thermal cam and see what's going on. Okay, so let's inject voltage at the shorted area of the MOSFET. We're going to inject one volt. One, two, three. Okay, so what's getting hot? Right there, right there. That's what's getting hot. Right here. We have something getting hot right here. If we look at this area, what do we have? We have another two MOSFETs with two capacitors on the top. It's very likely that one of those two capacitors is what's shortened to ground. We injected voltage here, and something got hot right here in this area. So how do we know which component is causing the short? Right now, I suspect that one of the two capacitors on top is what's causing the short. I can easily use our hot tweezers. I'll remove cap number one. If it's not causing the short, I'll put it back and I'll remove cap number two. And that way we can find out which cap is causing the short. But let's say we have a lot of components in this area. We have 20, 30 capacitors on this area of the board and we do not know which capacitor is causing the short. Today we're going to be using a new tool. We're going to be using this tool here. We got it yesterday. We have 400 pieces. They will be posted on our website today. I tried it this morning and I love it. The way this tool works is we put a piece of frozen flux inside the core. We close it. We press and hold the button. The core is going to heat up the piece of flux inside. We flip it upside down, and this will spray flux powder over the area. Let's say we spray flux powder on this area of the board. What's going to happen is when we inject voltage at the shorted area of the MOSFET, the component that is getting hot will cause flux to melt over it. And that way, we can pinpoint which component is causing the short. Now, like I said, I used this tool this morning, and I love it. The only difficult thing I found was how to break a piece of the rosin flux to put it inside the core. We have rosin flux right here, and this is hard like a rock. I tried to break it with the tweezer like this, so I can take a piece and put it inside the core, but it proved to be difficult. So then I found an easier way. I applied heat onto the flux. It got softer, and I took some off with this plastic spudger. And now I'm able to break a piece of the flux from the spudger and put it inside the core. That's the way I'm doing it. I do not know if there's an easier way, but let me show you. When I applied hot air onto the flux, I took some with this plastic spudger. And now what I can do is I can break a piece off. Look at this. I can break it off like this. And now I can take that piece and put it inside the core. We pop this open like this. And I take that piece that we just broke, that piece of frozen flux, and we put it inside the core. Okay, 
just like that. Let's close it. What we do now is we press and hold the button and you're going to see the inside is starting to smoke. We're going to flip it upside down like this and we're going to apply. Actually, I'm applying at the wrong side of the board. Hold on, let me check. Where are we applying flux? Oh, here, yeah, yeah, okay. So we're going to press and hold. And let me go under the microscope so you can see what's going on. I press on the button and we can spray flux powder on this area. Right, so as you can see, we applied flux powder onto this area. Let's inject voltage and see what gets hot. One, two, and three. Right there. You see it? <laughs> you see it? Let's apply more flux powder. So let's inject voltage one more time. One, two. You see it? So we know that that's the problem. That's our problem right there. How nice is that tool to pinpoint us to the component that is shot into ground? Amazing. I mean, this is the second time I used this tool. I used it once this morning just to see how it works. And I'm using it now. And wow, it's very useful. I still have to get used to it on how to position it so we can apply the flux powder onto the right spot because it seems like flux powder is going to the left or right but maybe because i had my fume extractor on and i'm still getting used to how to break a piece of the rosin flux this is hard like a rock right now the way i'm doing it is i'm applying hot air and then i'm just taking a bit of the soft flux when it's hot with this plastic spudger tool and then i break a piece off from the spudger tool and i put it inside the core maybe there's an easier way but that's the way i'm doing it right now all right, so we know that that's our problem right here. Let's go ahead and remove the capacitor. We're going to use our hot tweezers and then we're going to replace it. Just like that. And now the flux powder is turning into flux, as you can see. I'm still going to add more flux here. And we're going to apply, we're going to prep those pads and now we're going to solder a new cap. And there's a 99.9% .9 chance that this board is fixed. Because a lot of times viewers, they ask, what if I do not have a thermal cam? How can I pinpoint where the short is coming from. This tool definitely helps. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you spray flux powder all over the board and then see where flux is melting. No. The way you can do it is you can inject voltage and then you can feel with your hand which area of the board is getting hot. Let's say it's this area. Then you can spray flux powder here or maybe on the back and then try to narrow it down to which component is causing the short. Me, as a person who has the thermal cam, I honestly do not need this tool, but this one can pinpoint where the short is coming from. That's what's nice about this tool. If I'm working on a board like this, it's very easy to spray flux powder on the whole board, and then we inject voltage and we can see which component is causing the short. But on a laptop motherboard, you will have to feel with your hands first if you do not have a thermal cam, and then you can apply flux powder and see and pinpoint which component is causing the short. So let's go ahead and solder this capacitor. Right, and just like that. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna take a minute to reassemble the board. Since Big Boss is not here, it's already closing time. 
And fume extractor off, we do not need it. Alright, so I plugged in the LCD cable. We have the keyboard flex cable. I connected those two cables. The hard drive is not connected, but it doesn't matter. And we do have our RAM. Let's plug in power. And also, I do not have the battery connected. I do not think this laptop needs a battery to turn on. And I need to get the proper charger for this laptop. Just a minute. I had it on my bench right here. I thought it was still inside. All right, so we're gonna plug the charging cable and we do see a red light here and the keyboard is on. All right, we do see the keyboard on. Are we gonna see anything on the screen? Am I missing something? Maybe we need a battery. Maybe the battery has to be plugged in order for this to turn on. Okay, something is missing. But the computer is powering on now. Something is missing. What is missing? Let me grab the battery because some laptops need the battery to turn on. Or we may even need the fan to be connected for this computer to turn on. But let me try to connect the battery and see what happens. And I do see that the customer tampered with the battery connector and the battery connector is broken on the sides. but. We should still be able to connect the battery. And let's check it out now. I tried to power it on using battery power and it's not coming on, so we know that the battery is dead. All right, so. The keyboard is powering on, but we're not getting anything on the screen and the computer is showing off after a few seconds. Maybe we have to connect the fans. I installed the fans. And let's see. The fans sometimes can prevent the computer from powering on. The computer will not power on if you do not have the fans connected on some laptops. Oh yeah, right there, <laughs> right there. Laptop is fixed. Wow, awesome, amazing. I'm gonna put this on Big Boss's bench so he can reassemble it tomorrow. And that's it, we're gonna end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.